Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to our midday prayer for this Tuesday, the 26th of May, which is the day in the church's calendar when we remember the first Archbishop of Canterbury, Augustine, who was made Archbishop in the year 605. Uh, for the rest of this week, there is Compline tomorrow evening at 8, and um, We've recorded a podcast uh, this morning with Andy Jolly, our Archdeacon, which we'll publish on Thursday morning at 11 o'clock. And then we move on, of course, to next Sunday, which is Pentecost Day, the day of Pentecost. And so uh, over Friday, Saturday, we'll be recording the, uh, uh, the Mass uh, for the Feast of Pentecost. But first, a brief introduction to the life of Augustine of Canterbury. Augustine was prior of the monastery in St Andrews in Rome. In 596, at the instigation of Pope Gregory the Great, Augustine was dispatched as leader of a group of 40 monks to re-evangelise the English church. Augustine appears not to have been a particularly confident person, and in Gaul he wanted to turn back. But Pope Gregory's firm resolution held and the group to their mission. The monks finally landed in Kent in the summer of the year 597, where they were well received by King Ethelbert, whose wife Bertha was a Christian. Once established, Augustine returned temporarily to Gaul to receive ordination as a bishop. Pope Gregory would have preferred London to have become the primatial see, but in the event Canterbury was chosen, and thus Augustine became the first Archbishop of Canterbury, and he died in the year either 604 or 605. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. If I climb up to heaven, you are there. If I make the grave my bed, you are there also. sing to the Lord a new song. For he has done marvellous things. His right hand and his holy arm have gained him victory. The Lord has made known his victory. 
He has revealed his vindication in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. Sing praises to the Lord with the lyre, with the lyre and the sound of melody, with trumpets and the sound of the horn. Make a joyful noise before the King, the Lord. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the world and those who live in it. Let the floods clap their hands. Let the hills sing together for joy at the presence of the Lord, for he is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with equity. Glory, Glory to the Father and to the Son and, and to, to the, the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the beginning, beginning is now and, and shall, shall be forever. Amen. He put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. A reading from a history of the English church and people by the Venerable Bede. King Ethelbert granted Augustine and his companions a dwelling in the city of Canterbury, which was the chief city of his kingdom, and in accordance with his promise he allowed them provisions and did not inhibit their freedom to preach. As soon as they had occupied the house given to them, they began to emulate the life of the apostles and the primitive church. They were constantly at prayer, they fasted and kept vigils, and they preached the word of life to whomsoever they could. They regarded worldly things as of little importance and accepted only the necessities of life from those they taught. They practised what they preached, and were willing to endure any hardship, and even to the point of dying for the truths they proclaimed. Before long, a number of people, admiring the simplicity of their holy lives, and the comfort of their heavenly message, believed and were baptised. On the east side of the city stood an old church built in honour of St Martin during the Roman occupation of Britain, where the Queen, who was a Christian, used to pray. Here the monks first assembled to sing psalms, to pray, to celebrate the Eucharist, to preach and to baptise, until the King's own conversion to the faith gave them even greater freedom to preach and to build and restore churches everywhere. At the last the king himself, among others, attracted by the pure lives of these holy men and their joyous promises, the truth of which they confirmed by many miracles, believed and was baptised. Thenceforward great numbers gathered each day to hear the word of God, forsaking their heathen worship and entering the unity of Christ's holy church. While the king was pleased at their faith and conversion, it is said that he would not compel anyone to accept Christianity, for he had learned from his instructors and guides to salvation that the service of Christ must be accepted freely and not under compulsion. Meanwhile, God's servant Augustine visited Arles, and in accordance with the command of the Holy Father Gregory, was consecrated Archbishop of the English nation by Etherius, 
Archbishop of that city. Let us pray. We give thanks today for the life and witness of St Augustine of Canterbury and for his re-evangelization of these islands from the south and for the vision of Pope Gregory the Great. And so we pray today for the English church and people. For Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury. And for those who serve with him in leadership of the Church of England. For our own Archbishop, St. Amil. We pray for the Church's work of mission and evangelism in our own day. Augustine inspired the king and his people through the holiness and dedication of, his, of their lives, through their commitment to the life of prayer and for their preaching and simple witness to their faith in Christ. We pray that, this, that in this age and generation, the church may be inspired by their example and convicted by the same spirit. For Queen Elizabeth and for the royal family. For the peoples of the world and especially for our own English people as we grapple with our present pandemic. For our Prime Minister and Government and for all who lead our local communities. For those serving the sick, those giving medical and scientific advice, for researchers, for emergency workers, for all who serve our National Health Service and especially for the life of our hospitals. We pray for our elderly who are especially vulnerable to this virus, for those isolated in their own homes and for those responsible for their care in our rest and nursing homes. We pray for those in our parish, for Abbey Field and Abbey Dale, for Glen Rosa, Straven House and for Troutbeck for their dedicated staff and for their residents. We offer to God all who are sick today and particularly those for whom we have been asked to pray. My name we pray for those who have died and especially those whose years mind of death falls today for Margaret Buckle, William Hardy and Richard Benson. For those who remember them in love and thanksgiving. Almighty God, whose servant Augustine was sent as the apostle of the English people, grant that as he laboured in the spirit to preach Christ's gospel in this land, so all who hear the good news may strive to make your truth known in all the world. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Christ yesterday and today, the beginning and the end, Alpha and Omega, all time belongs to you and all ages. To you be glory and power through every age and for ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, Father who, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May the risen Christ give us his peace. Alleluia. Amen. Amen.